Hello friends, I welcome you to lecture 61. It is team management and it is a very very important interesting topic. So, we are in the final phase of our <coughs> Six Sigma course and we are just discussing some of the important implementation issues and challenges. So, team management is the extremely important issue when you think about say executing a Six Sigma project which demands the cross functional knowledge, which demands the cooperation of the people, which need to be executed by black belt, green belt, master black belt under the sponsorship of the top management, you need to appreciate that what could be the issues and some of the positive and negative side when you are trying to lead a team or you are trying to execute a project in a team. So, let us begin with a very beautiful and uh, inspiring thought. A key to achieve success is to assemble a strong and stable management team by say Vivek Vadva. So, it is a very good statement and says that a key to achieve success is to assemble a strong and stable two requirement. One is strong, another is stable. You may have a strong team in terms of the skills but you may not have a stable team which can really execute the project and take the project to the final end. Think about a cricket team. We may have the excellent players in a team of 11. They may have world records on their name, but if they do not work as a team, then we will lose the match. So, here you need to have a strong and stable team which cooperates with each other and pushes the goal till the goal is achieved. So, we have talked about various acts in detail in the previous lecture that was about DFX. Now, I want to talk about some of the important issues in team management that is types of team, team roles, team member selection, team say motivation, team development stages, team communication and dynamics. So, let us try to appreciate this content and when you act as a manager, as a leader of the team, you must see that these dimensions are well satisfied. So, let us understand what is a team. Should I call anything as a team? Suppose, <coughs> say I am walking uh, around a city with two, four people, my friends, should I call it as a team? So, team basically is a group of two or more people who are associated in some action and this action or joint action is for a particular purpose. So, you can have multi skill people, you can have baller, you can have batsman, you can have fielder, but ultimate goal is to win the match. So, you have a group of people, multiple skill people integrated and this integration is trying to achieve a particular goal or purpose and then when this is achieved, I will say it is a team. So, there is a strong desire and need of team in all the facets of the project, whether it is sports, whether it is industry, whether it is missile project or anything, you need to have a strong need for the team. So, you have typically two ways <coughs> to make improvement, improve performance given the current system or improve the system itself. So, either you can improve the current performance of the system, it may last for some time or you altogether improve the system itself. So, improving performance in the existing system may be accomplished by individuals. For example, an operator might make certain adjustment to the machines. Studies indicate that only 5 percent to 15 percent of the improvements are such, but remaining 85 percent to 95 percent cases require to change the system itself and 
the required group and team action. I will just give you the example. You are going to a bank, typically for service industry people. Now you will find that there are suppose 15 counters and invariably when you go to counter number 3 where you want to deposit a check, this counter is very fast. Suppose you are going to counter number 7 to get your demand draft, this counter is little bit slow. You are going to another counter to get your application approved, maybe counter 1, this counter is extremely slow. Now here, assuming that the workload is same, it is the people or individual decides the performance of a particular counter or particular subsystem. So, if you are targeting only a particular subsystem, then it may be quite an individualistic approach, but if you target the overall culture attitude of the people in the bank, then it is a systemic approach and here you would find that all the counters more or less when you will go, they would be delivering this service within a particular target period. So, here when I talk about the improvement, 85 to 95 percent improvements are possible when you try to change the system through a team based approach. Now, characteristic of a team, teams exist to fulfill some specific purpose, members are willing to sacrifice for the common good. So, here you cannot achieve anything, just think about let us say the example of a cricket match and suppose you are chasing say final 25 runs and you need to say make it in 20 balls. So, it is a quite competitive target. Now, there is a batsman, a well set batsman on the pitch and other side you have a baller. So, a batsman who is a baller, already you have lost 9 wickets or 8 wickets let us say. Now, in this case obviously, a baller would like to rotate the strike and try to see that maximum strike can be given, number of times strike can be given to this set batsman. Even sometimes if there is a need to sacrifice, suppose they are running, taking a run and if one person has to accept the run out, then many a times the person who is well set will be protected, supported by the other team member. So, uh, here you have to see that there are some common good for which members are ready to sacrifice. You have a new product development project, you have a new software development project, you cannot really contribute during your 10 to 5 schedule. So, member they commit to meet after 5 or 5.30 evening and then they will work on it for maybe 1 and a half hour or 2 hour. So, you have to sacrifice, require some form of communication to coordinate a formal approach and they share the rewards for a good or strong team performance. So, these are some of the uh, characteristic or spirit of a team that needs to be say inculcated. Now, when I am using the word team and group interchangeably you may get confused, but there is a clear cut definition team versus group. A group is a collection of individual, I am taking a round of my say city or campus with 3, 4 people my friends we are a group. When you say team, then it has a specific purpose, they are committed to a purpose with specific skill, multiple skill in the team and this is something which is different than the group. So, a team is a group of people working together to achieve a mutual goal and when this is executed, your group really becomes a team otherwise just the collection of people will not serve the purpose, it is a group. There could be different types of teams, let us say formal teams, informal teams or you can have some six sigma teams 
like process improvement teams, work groups, self-managed teams. So we will see a couple of them. Formal teams, often this team is appointed by a manager. You have a process which is producing lot of defectives. You appoint the people from different uh, area and this is a team and they are given the target to reduce the defect rate from present 15% to 9%. Then it is a team and it is led by a particular functional head or the manager and this is a formal team. So they may have a charter that includes a listing of the team member, their signature, their commitment, responsibility and statement of support from the management. This is very important because you may start a project and you need resources to execute the project in between management will withdraw the support. So it is always better to take the formal approval of the budget and the top management for a selected project and this is called formal team. You may have an informal team. So groups made up of two or more individuals who are associated with one another in ways not prescribed by the formal organization. So this team can arise when a group of people realize they have a common goal, common problem to address and some informal team may arise from the social networks. So let us say couple of operators they come together and they say that the output of station 1 is creating the problem for out say input uh, used FI station 2 and same way there are some issues. Now where the problem lies they are not able to figure out they may form an informal team to see that how <coughs> the problem can be rectified and collectively they agree on a solution. Here the word I have used social network so nowadays we all are connected through various platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp and uh, maybe the simple way is email and likewise. So you have your social network and here also this is the web based network and you can come together and try to solve or find the solution to some of the problem. There are some issues specific to process improvement teams that typically focuses on Six Sigma project and improving say one or more important characteristic of a process. So there are couple of well known strategies like Kaizen, it is a continuous improvement strategy, incremental improvement, radical change breakthrough you might be desiring. So team composed of members associated with the process on routine basis for bringing some improvement in the process they are typically part of process improvement team. You have work groups they focus on improvement within a particular functional area. Now let us say packaging department they are really facing some difficulty when it comes to packaging and shipping the products then they will have a team of the manager as well as the people handling the material to see that how they can design a new packaging system or how they can say use the existing packaging system by consolidating the con say various products or consignments and also ensure the transportation efficiency. So uh, likewise you can have various functional groups for example say pizza delivery you have the delivery boys and they face some difficulty and they are not able to reach within a company stipulated time maybe 30 minutes they may form a team and just try to think that okay what are the possible routes that can have a less traffic and in what way we can reach faster to our customer so these are the work groups they typically address a particular uh, problem which is well within a given function and this is called work groups. You will find the people who are self motivated and they form a self managed teams. Here these teams are created by the self motivated people and definitely it brings lot of benefit to the company in terms of improved moral of the employee, increased flexibility, increased productivity, lower turnover and uh, also it helps 
the employee to improve their moral and the self esteem as well as job satisfaction remember you do not every day go to your job to count your salary after some age you overcome your operational issues in life and initial hassling and then you will go to your place to be seen as a dignified person to be seen as a contributor to be seen as a problem solver and then you feel really delighted your self esteem is enhanced so this is where self manage team comes nowadays with the help of all this uh, say web platforms available facebook social media and other you can have virtual team and you can see the best example is the it company you have a debugging team maybe in indonesia malaysia india you have a designers maybe let us say in europe or other country and this cross functional team as well as virtual team will interact with each other not located at a particular place and they try to derive the efficiency leverage the efficiency by having the connection of the experts people across the world medical is again not an exception today if there is a critical surgery you can have a virtual team you can call the doctors they can give let us say their inputs and the person or surgeon located at a particular place can really execute well under the guidance of this virtual team so you have a virtual team now let us try to see that there are various roles in a team so typically you have a team leader you have a facilitator you have a sponsor you have a scribe or recorder who will take the minutes of meeting and you have coach and team member so if we just see quickly the various roles as it is quite self explanatory from the name that team leader it sets the purpose convinces the people collects the people of multi skill and try to set the drive for executing a project then you have a facilitator so many a time say uh, you need a person who can help the people or member that they need to align their objectives for a particular purpose or goal set by the leader provide the necessary resources or facilitate in getting the necessary resources and also helps in resolving the conflicts so these are some of the roles of the facilitator and also keep the team on the track and updated about the progress of the project there are other roles that you can well appreciate that you have a sponsor or authority entity you cannot execute the project without finance or the approval of the top authority or some sponsoring agency so typically you have selects objectives and scope organizes team monitor progress arranges for resources needed your finance and resources you have a scribe and recorder you may take many many decisions in each meeting but then you need to document it properly otherwise it is really difficult to follow up and set the connection between say the set of decisions taken in meeting 1 and then subsequently in meeting 2 so you need a scribe or recorder who will basically maintain the record and publish the minutes of meeting and keep the people aware that in what way we are progressing because see you have drawn the people from various functions and now next day when these people will come they will go back to their function and they will forget so it's necessary to keep them updated and you need a say scribe or recorder you have a coach he will work with the team leader and facilitator move the team towards objectives and try to see that if there are any issues specific to training or any any hurdles then using his experience he will try to help the team to overcome it and finally you have the team members the most important component who will execute the project and they are the individuals with different skills working for a common purpose or goal in a well established interconnected framework and this is something is the role of team member so you have to select the members based on certain criteria 
that skills, qualifications, technical knowledge, representative of various project stakeholders across functional team, members with access to say outside technical resources as needed and must have the basic team working training. When you launch the team, there are certain prerequisites. Many a times we have seen that projects they fail right at the beginning because they were not launched appropriately. So, what does it mean? It means that you need to at least ensure couple of things when you float the project, when you launch the team for a particular task. Number one, set clear purposes and goals that are directly related to the project charter. Let every person involved in the team to understand what is to be achieved and what they are expected to chase. Number two, basic team building training for the members. Many a times people they misunderstand between working in a say, say living in a group and working in a team. So, you need to give them a training that how will you execute when it comes to team performance and cricket is the best example, football is the best example that how you can sacrifice your individual achievements when it comes to the ultimate performance of the team. A schedule of team meetings should be published early. Say people they, they need to be sensitized about their role. Suppose you are inviting somebody as a keynote speaker and if you have not sensitized this person about the time limit, about the topic, about the kind of audience or number of people, then this person may deliver the speech but will not be defective for a particular context. So, you need to sensitize the people, establish clear management support, this is very important. See your people, team member will lose the confidence unless they see that yes there is a backbone, a strong support of the uh, management and unless they see it, they cannot really feel confident. So, this needs to be declared right at the beginning when you launch the team and then your team will feel powered with the uh, lot of support of management and motivation and they can really execute the project. There are various stages of team development which you cannot avoid like when a baby takes the birth, there are various stages and you have to handle all these stages very very carefully. So, just see that what are the broad stages. Stage number 1 is forming, stage number 2 is storming, norming, performing, adjourning. Say quite uh, say sounds like your repetitive kind of words, but there is a meaning, there is a distinct objective. So, forming, storming, norming, performing and adjourning. Let us try to see what exactly we try to achieve in each particular phase. So, you have the first phase forming in which your group leader will select the members, multi skilled people, form a team, they all will come together and typically your leader dominates the decision making process, so that people can feel comfortable with the objective, understand the purpose and this is the first stage which is the forming. Extroverted outspoken members may rapidly assume some kind of leadership role and this needs to be prevented because your purpose is just to form the team of a people having desired qualifications and skills and they need to be sensitized about the purpose. Now, the moment people will come together, they cannot live quietly. So, it is expected and well appreciated that let them have discussion, let them have conflict and this is the second stage which is called storming. So, now once they are in the team, will I play on the first position or as a middle order or maybe at the second position, they will have conflict. They will ask for the resources, they will have the negotiations, bargaining and everything. This is the storming stage and you need to be patient in handling the storming stage. You cannot avoid it. 
and you need not to avoid it. Let people to resolve their concerns right at the early stage so that later on they do not become silent and just go away from the objectives of the project or the purpose of the project. The third is norming. Now that storming phase is over, people have struggled, they have conflict, everything is done. Now they are accepting their roles. They start taking the responsibility of the goals, procedures, behavior. Then internal group structure is sorted, the hierarchy is defined, approving authority. And once this is done, you will say the norms are set, that is why it is called norming. Then performing. So here now leader must delegate and team must execute. So this is the performing stage and this is characterized by action, results, team cohesion and identity and moving in unison towards the goal and completion. Finally adjourning. So this stage involves the completion and disengagement. Now you had created the team. So this team, the task is achieved. You need to dismantle this team adjourning stage, they may go back to their own function. An ideal way to close it to set aside time to debrief, acknowledge and celebrate that what we have accomplished and achieved. Let us accept our shortcomings and let us also appreciate the contributions of the people. And this is something the final phase which is very important. You should not curtail your project just like that because remember you will need these people again. And even if you don't need them, let people to go back to their function with enhanced self-esteem and moral that they have really accomplished something. So it is adjourning. So typically this is the summary of the stages that when you say the forming, uncertainty, formal interaction coming together, this is the phase of storming, conflict, disagreement, setting the norm, structure and procedure, norming, performing, pride, cohesion, action assessment, decision and separation that is the adjourning. So I hope uh, you must have appreciated. The most important thing in executing the team is team communication. If you ask me, based on my experience, I would say that 70 to 80 percent of the problem we encounter in executing a project is mainly because of the communication. And if you can really streamline the communication, then your majority of the problems can be resolved or sorted out right at the beginning. So, lack of adequate communication is one of the frequently noted cause of the team failure and we must put effort to improve upon communication. There are need of communication at different stages. You cannot have same level of rigor and requirement at all the stages. For example, say if you say first stage while initiating the team then declaring the clear goals and objectives to the team, roles of the members, teams, initiation should be in the form of a written document, team norms are often established and this is the requirement of the communication at the first stage. Then you have the during the life of the team, you need to make the announcements of the team meetings, you need to keep them updated and then following project completion, final report and follow up memos regarding the disposition of team proposals should be provided to each team member. There are some obstacles when you work in a team. So let us see some obstacles and solutions. Number one obstacle when you talk about a team is a person or group dominates the discussion. They will try to use their seniority or they will try to say that I have 30 years of experience and these and that or they are outspoken, they have extraordinary command over their language and personality. So they try to, so they need to be counseled, facilitator need to intervene and try to see that everyone gets a scope on window to express their views so that they feel part of the team. Second is a person or group is reluctant to participate. Many a times they have certain reservations, some politics, some biases some interpersonal issues, then they will come, but they will remain silent and this is not helpful. So let us try to resolve such issues and see that 
they participate with enthusiasm and equally when they execute as a team. Tendency exists to accept opinion without data. If this is the case, what is the need of Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a fact based, data based management which is a set of tools and techniques and ensures the quality at all the stages based on the facts and data. So, such kind of tendencies should be minimized by publishing the report, sensitizing the people about the data and the results. The next one is emphasis on consensus, consensus without fair hearing of views. Many people they will say it is ok, I have listened to everyone and now we have huge experience so we reach to this consensus. So, you are say marginalizing the importance and involvement of the people and this will really demoralize them. So, try to seek the consensus within the given time limit, you can set the procedure, but this is very important. Members begin to air old disputes not at all acceptable, they must keep the disputes seniority power position before entering into the discussion room and they must keep it aside. Then floundering lose sight of goals and objectives, they may start diverting into different directions which is not relevant to the particular purpose and then it will dilute the spirit of entire team. So, this also needs to be restricted. Many points I have put rushing to meet milestones without thoroughly study or analysis again not fact based management then issues or at as uh, a attribution. So, you have who should get credit for an accomplishment many a times leader they want to eat the entire credit, but this is not good for the moral of the team and you will always say see that when a team wins captain will always appreciate and acknowledge the efforts of team member and simply not say that it is because of my captaincy this team has won. So, uh, the team disagree to uh, too far from its goals and objectives, they are not ready to accept the goals and objectives. This is again a negative tendency, this needs to be tackled right at the say team design interaction stage. There are some counterproductive roles I would like to emphasize, aggressor they try to dominate, recognition seeker, they are not interested in executing the project but they just want to have recognition, involvement and show business. So, this kind of people dilute the spirit of team operation. Confessor, so this expresses personal ideologies, they will say see I believe in this, so I think this could be the way no need to analyze the data or go for the fact based management. We should keep such kind of ideologies aside when we are typically executing a Six Sigma project. Playboy, a very funny name, displays lack of commitment to groups work by cynicism or horseplay. So, they just uh, appear once in a while and we have many MPs, they attend the parliament just once in a while and uh, they just uh, try to do the show up. So, it is a playboy role. Dominator, they try to exercise their authority and demoralize the people. Then blockers, persisting on resolved issues, resist attempts at consensus. So, already which is something done, they will again try to go back, back and try to resist. So, the issue which is sorted out is closed unless there is a need to reopen, otherwise you go ahead. Then uh, say you have flap help seeker. So, they, they will not contribute, they would always like to seek the help and try to say always say poor me attitude, I am a very poor guy, I do not know. So, that is not acceptable, they must execute with their strength and skills and strengthen the team operation. Special interest pleader, so as that is the interest of a particular group that matches his or her self interest. So, they will always say yes when some people or group they are trying to put their view forward otherwise they will either go negative or they will remain silent. So, there are various team decision making tools in order to handle this kind of negative roles of the team and we have discussed couple of them previously also just to remind them nominal group technique. 
So here it reduces the effect of the power and status differences and typically you have the idea generation step, ideas are written, each member ranks the item on a piece of paper, totals are compiled for each item and represents the team's consensus and items with the highest total are taken as priority. This is the very simple tool, force field analysis if you see this figure, it is a useful technique for looking at all the forces positive and negative and then you just try to see that in order to take a particular decision, what are the resisting forces and what are the driving forces. You have multi voting, so typically this technique goes like this, work form a large list of items developed by brainstorming, assign a letter to each time to avoid confusion of the item, then each team member selects the most important one third of the items and voting may be done either by a show of hands or they may use the ballot paper like we do in the voting process and team chooses to preserve the confidentiality, they will not declare. Tally the votes and deciding how many items to eliminate, they will repeat this step 3 and 4 until only a few items are left. So, you are exposed to 20 decisions, you will select 4 or 5, you will vote for that they will rank it, they will make the final list, once again they will seek the opinion and they will continue till you reach to couple of decisions which are most promising based on multi voting process. So, this is a very unique approach and finally, we can say there are some team performance issues because unless you keep a track of the performance of the team, you cannot really say execute your project in an effective manner. So, you have time oriented, are we on the schedule, you have objective oriented, are we meeting our goals, you have monetary oriented, are we on budget. So, team motivation is basically governed by recognition, reward or fostering relationship within the team that also acts as a team motivation. So, when you talk about recognition, maybe you would like to publish the reports, recognize the people with their photograph in the <coughs> annual report or bulleting and these are the various ways for giving the public recognition. You may give them the letter of appreciation and uh, these are the various ways by which people they can see that they are appreciated, acknowledged and they become visible across the organization. Rewards many a times we think that monetary reward can work, uh, work best, fine it is ok, but you need to ensure that equal reward without considering amount of time sacrifice or results will backfire and this will demotivate the people. So, you may offer in a different way reward may be some holidays or may be some money or may be some gift voucher, there are ways and means to uh, give the reward or a foreign trip, but you must see that reward should go to the right people otherwise it will demoralize the team. So, there are some do's and do not that recognition program should not create winners and losers, people should not live with the diluted spirit. Recognition should be given for effort not just for the goal attainment and recognition should not be used to manipulate the employees and their perception. So, likewise recognition should not be seen as a compensation, it must enhance the moral and motivation of the people. Before we end just think it, what are the key characteristic of the team, what are the team development stages and what are its role, what are the team dynamics and what are the key team making decision making tools and what are the critical recognition and reward issues in the team management. You can use this couple of references and true team is more than a collection of individual, it is for a purpose, it is with the right spirit. So, with this thank you very much for your interest in learning the team management, such an interesting and fantastic topic, keep revising, keep implementing, introspecting, be with me, enjoy.